a, uh, we interfaced the keyboard using the PS2. Um, we made uh, like a terminal design where it's like a command prompt to type in a command, and then it, it does the command if there's an invalid oh, we'll go to the next slide again. And so, uh, oh, so we interfaced the Nexus 2 as opposed to like, we, we were actually using the Nexus 1 for Labs 1 before. So it came a little bit more difficult to use the Nexus 2 as far as like pinouts. It's different hardware essentially. Um, one of, well, I guess we'll talk about the main problem later. But uh, the, on the right are the keywords. So EDK tutorial, which is the EDK tutorial. If we have Hello World, the spinner, we can clear the LCD uh, either using a key or uh, a keyword. Uh, notes is just similar to their lab, which is uh, we can type things in and save them, and then we can retrieve it almost like a file. Um, any invalid keys uh, or any invalid keywords come out with an error message, and then we have just the line, which is the blue screen with that. Okay. So our hardware software diagram is that. The hardware was mostly the same uh, as the other labs, you know, the LCDs, LEDs, uh, but this, the only new part was the keyboard and the interface with the UART. Um, and so for software, uh, it has an input state where it's sitting there waiting for you to put input. You type your key, uh, keyword, you can backspace, you can move around with the arrow keys, and then you hit enter, and it checks to see if it's uh, a valid keyword or not. And if it's not a valid keyword, it displays an error. Um, and if it is a valid keyword, it'll run whatever command you want. So and there we go, hello world. It'll, it'll, uh, the idea was that we'd want to have all the functionality of all the other labs, but we did end up running out of room on the, the ramp. Um, and so from there, you can uh, delete their message or, um, and then type in their command. Um, essentially, it's just old hardware, new hardware, just UART and keyboard as new, highlighted by the other group. Um, our software is more of a state machine type. Um, as he explained earlier, it's just keywords, and if it's wrong, then it gives you an error message. So, uh, the, to integrate the keyboard, again, we used the UART, and uh, a main part of this was getting the baud rate, getting that uh, hooked up correctly, and uh, we came up with some problems doing that. Uh, well, the formula turns out like the formula that was 9600 9, over keyboard baud rate times 50 megahertz. Turns out that I guess most groups had a problem, I guess, from listening to them, is that that OPB clock frequency ends up being or lower than what's required. And, and, and the way I found that out is uh, when we output the scan code to the LEDs, because each scan code is comprised of two hex codes or two hex bits. And, Basically, out with the LCD and with a low enough uh, OPB frequency, it just it kept reporting E0, which is similar to like the release key, but was the extended key. So, it, so you just had to hire it in order to get that fixed. So we first did, first tested uh, the scan code. So you press a key on the keyboard, it sends the scan code, and then you release the key, and it sends the release scan code followed by the scan code again. And so we just used the LEDs to test the, the scan code. And we just sent the scan code directly to the LEDs. So you press the key, and it'll, in binary, represents with the LEDs the scan code. So that was our first testing. And then we went from there to start displaying characters on the LCD. And from then, we could start using that to check for commands. Uh, we used a lookup table to go from the, the scan codes to the, the characters, to the ASCII characters. It's like 200 and something lines long. So the, it was a fairly large lookup table, which probably used a significant amount of our memory. So our, the reason why this was a big problem is we tried to implement like lab one, lab three, and couldn't quite get it all the way through because our thing would literally freeze. So we had to get rid of that. So we implemented some Small, smaller other things. We had uh, one keyboard that we tested on the oscilloscope for the baud rate, and then had been using several different keyboards, and we found that we had errors switching from one 
one keyboard to another that had a, a different quadrant. And so again, we, we used the Nexus 2 this time instead of the Nexus 1. And it was just little things that we had to get over. Hi, and we are right here. Pretty much like a shell is basically what you uh, kind of do um, on the Nexus board. Thirty, yeah, thirty. <laughs> so the LEDs right now, like I can basically, it's just waiting for commands. You can type whatever you want essentially, and it'll actually go to the second line. Anyway, so I'm gonna clear with the escape, and then we will start with the EDK tutorial, which is EDK to hit enter, and the LED should get get going, which is just the 8-bit adder. That's it. I'll just do what it's supposed to do. But anyways, uh, next to clear and oh yeah, backspace works. So uh, hardware or H H W is Hello World. So that's gonna kind of pass just a keeps little going effect. through Hello World and then uh, you can you just use Escape as the Escape key and. It'll um, what else do we have here? So the, I notice that. LEDs are blinking like crazy when you type here. Is that showing you the uh, code of the key? Because it does the, uh, the first time you press the key, it sends the scan code. When you release, it does the... Uh, the release code. The release code, and yeah. then the, uh, the scan code again. That's pretty cool. Um, what else do we have? We have a spinner. It's just spin. It just looks cool. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we were going... Again, we were going for... Um, to have all the functionality of all the labs, but we, did, we ran out of room on the RAM and so we had to take stuff off and add, so we added a couple extra little things. But, um, we have a command called clear, although it's like since it's one line there's really nothing to clear, so it just clears <laughs> itself. Um, notes. Notes. Essentially, oops. Oh, there was still stuff that. in there. Yeah, um, system reset. So our, our system reset works. Oh, so we can enter notes and type things in. Hello. And if we escape from that and we type notes to active to open it again, it'll bring it back up. So that's like an array. Uh, we can also overwrite. Oops, I pressed escape. But we can go back and it changes, so we can overwrite that. Um, so then you can go in and do the other programs and come back, and the notes will still be there. Right. Um, blue screen of death. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, blue screen of death is just. It just prints out error a lot. And, and you can't escape. Yeah, and you it's can't. It's like a <laughs> So you have to reset the system. So we just have to reset. Um, another thing that we have, I guess, is just like we can move around the LCD and type wherever we want. Um, How are you doing that? Scan just the arrows. OK. So we can just move around and type the arrows. Um, we also have home and end, which is home brings you to the beginning, and end brings you to the end. And then we can backspace it all out. And I think that's about it. Oh yeah, and our number pad works. F keys don't output anything funny either. And the escape is declare. And then if you give it a bogus command, it just says... Oh, it's just an uh, invalid keyword. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. Good. That's it. Nice. All right.